I'm building a two trailer tiny house. The windows are finally in, so it's time for a build update. Now there's quite a bit to cover in this video, so I'm actually gonna split it up into two videos. In this one, we're gonna have a look at how I installed the windows, and the next video, we'll have a look at the windows in a bit more detail inside the house. Christmas Eve, I got the last window in. I can't tell you how chuffed I was to finally have these windows in. I could go into Christmas and just relax. I severely <laughs> underestimated how much work these things were gonna be, particularly the way I chose to do them. Like hand making all these frames, the brass inlays, which just took so much time, and then trying to line up this glass perfectly on the outside of them. But the biggest challenge ended up being getting enough adhesive. Uh, this stuff is pretty special adhesive to be able to stick glass on the outside of a window unsupported. And uh, the supply doesn't have any in the country, so they'd sort of said December, and that got extended to February, and who knows when it's actually gonna get here. So I spent two months searching places that might have some sitting on the shelf. And I think it was like three different places I had to order from just to get enough to do this. And with the stuff up that I've had, I don't actually have enough to finish, but that's another problem. We'll come back to that later. But the most disheartening thing that happened was when my kitchen window was 10 mils too short along the log edge. I, it's a 2.7 meter piece of glass. It was probably the hardest piece to set. I put it down in place and then I could see along the long edge, it was 10 mil short. I could still see all the adhesive. By chance, I actually had the GoPro and record instead of time-lapse and catch of the moment when I realized it was wrong. This is what despair looks like. <laughs> So to rectify that, I had to pull the glass off. I had to clean everything back to bare material. And because it's silicon based, there can't be any residue. And so make sure I don't get any solvent or residue across the glass that's gonna affect the clarity of the glass. So I had to clean everything back to scratch. I then had to dismantle the kitchen window and rebuild it 10 mil smaller. Luckily, it was the one window I could actually shorten a little bit, rebuilt it, and then stuck the glass for a second time. And then I had to let that cure and I got that in just before Christmas. So what I thought I might do is show you how I installed these windows, but also give you a bit more information on how I've gone about detailing so that they're weatherproof. Early morning start this morning because we lift a 2.7 meter window and I need the wind to be calm. Right now, it's perfect. So I need to get into this window before the wind picks up today. Given this is the last window, I thought a great opportunity to show you how I'm detailing the window. So I'll talk you through it as I'm putting this window in. First step is to cut the wrap out level with the frame. Now, I wouldn't normally cut building wrap level with the frame. Um, with thinner building wraps, I'd actually wrap it around inside the frame and fasten it on the inside of the frame. Um, the problem is with this foam cell, because it's so thick, it ends up packing out my window recess far too much for the window. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting it level with the frame and then taping it in with the reinforced foil tape. I then cut 45s out from my window up 100 mil. So I've already taped the bottom piece on, then I'm gonna tape the side pieces. Um, always lap down, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. It doesn't actually matter too much in Australia because we're not using this part of the system as the detailing that's stopping moisture. We actually stop the moisture before it's getting to this part. So this just helps seal it up, stopping the air getting through. So 45 cut, we run our tape up past that a little bit. Then down the side. Now we're ready to fix on the damp coursing or the snake skin. Um, this is key part of the detailing system to keep moisture out of the windows. Um, so first of that, I'm actually gonna fold up my top layer of foam cell to get it up out of the way. And I'm just gonna fix it in place temporarily. So the dime pattern on here actually helps moisture uh, to bead down. Um, strangely water doesn't always just run down it can sort of run down and across and it's how we can get it wicking inside the window so i think the diamond pattern actually helps direct the moisture straight down um, so first step is to do 150 mil flashing along the bottom of the window um, that extends out past where we're going to have 100 mil flashing so it's as simple as 
fixing onto the frame of the wall and having it extending down. Now, if you're getting your windows made, you can actually get the windows made with this stuff already attached. So the other part, uh, the other way is to have this pre-attached to your windows, which makes life a little bit easier. So we line up at the bottom of the window and staple it. And extend the base flashing out past where we're going to take our side flashing. So then we run our side flashings in the same way. Um, this is 100 mil. I think it's meant to be 110 mil actually, I'm not sure. The Australian Window Association actually has information on um, how you're meant to detail a window, uh, what size flashings you're meant to use, and in different applications you have ease, etc. So I'm going to run the side flashings. I'll run them up underneath, my, underneath the top here and down overlap over the top of the bottom piece. Um, in everything we're doing here, there's um, a concept of overlap. So every piece that's coming down, the higher piece should overlap over the top so that any moisture is directed over the top of the bottom flashing, which is where we want it going. Same process. Let's run this up underneath my building wrap. Level with the edge of the window. Run it down to the bottom of our other one here. And then we chop her off. So the last step is actually run a piece over the top of the window uh, that comes down over the top of these side flashings and over the top of the weather strip of the window. Now I could staple that in now and um, fold it back up, but I actually find it easier to come and chuck that in over the top afterwards. So it makes it one less thing I have to deal with as I'm trying to guide that window in. Okay, inside to fix the window, what I'm going to do is to screw through my frame into the frame of my window. Now, normally when you're fixing a window, you'd be screwing through the reveal into the frame of the, t of the wall um, and then patching it on the inside. That makes it a bit easier if you want to remove the window. However, because I've got such beautiful timber here, I don't want to touch that, not even with nails. So what I'm going to do is screw through the wall into my timber of the, um, the window. Now it does mean if I ever need to remove the window, I have to take the lining off to get it out or destroy the window, which is not ideal, but um, I'm willing to take that for the sake of keeping this looking really nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to um, get the corners set and get this bottom rail level. So what, I've, what I'm gonna do is um, I run a string line along the bottom here where I'm gonna pack out at the bottom on each end. That gives me a reference. Then what I need to do is to get in the center here, and it points along here, the same distance between the string line and the packers. Um, now this, for some reason, has a little bow up in the middle. Uh, I'm not too sure where that's come from, but doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do is to get this nice and straight, particularly because this is going to meet the, um, the countertop of my kitchen. I'm gonna, pack up these ends here and take the bow out of that so that it gets it nice and level and then I'll just pack into immediately to make sure that that's straight. All I have to do is get the chisel underneath there in the gap and just open that up put a packer in there. So I think I need to lift this end a little bit as well chisel in there lift him up. Now when I run along there I put this I've got it screwed down the middle so I can't lift up put that packer in it's Spot on. So because I've got the packers underneath here and the string line running along, this string line should run straight and the timber here should parallel. So I can use this packer, which is the same width, to see if the string line is the same height. So now, those ends packed, this bottom rail is dead straight. So I can screw that in and then when I come around to the top here, I'll do the same on the top to make sure I've got that top rail nice and straight and I'll use packers between that top 
to move it up or down to get this rail straight. Now I didn't explain myself very well, but it was a 5 a.m. start. Uh, what I didn't mention is you're actually trying to get this bottom rail level as well as straight. So I'd already checked the level, so I knew it was okay. Um, if you had one end that was lower than the other, you would use some packers to lift it up until you got the two corners level, and then you'd use a string line to make sure you got the rail straight. Then because our sides are the same length, we know that all we need to do is get this top rail straight and it should be parallel with the bottom one. One other little trick for tiny houses, if you're gonna use a level to set your windows, make sure you check the trailer first. Uh, even if it's level, you can move out of place. So before I put any window in, I made sure I check the trailer below it to make sure it's level so that when I reference the level with the window, uh, it's gonna be spot on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to screw these in. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is use a packer up against the frame here. So my plywood is going to meet my timber like this with a shadow line and it's going to be the same height. So I've got 9mm plywood plus a, a mil of adhesive. So I'm going to use a 10mm packer and it's going to bring the front of that window out to the same height as the packer there. So I'll do it on the corners first and then I'll work along, fix this bottom rail and because I can't hold the packer and screw the screw in at the same time, I'm going to use the suction cup and a ratchet strap over to the other wall there just to pull it in for me while I'm doing it. Not really necessary if you've got another person helping you and sort of hold it, but it makes my life a little bit easier. There we go, nice and straight. All right. Now I'm going to do the same with the top and uh, set the depth right, run a string line along there, get that nice and straight, Bob's your uncle. Actually not too bad. It's up a little bit so I can fix my corners and I'll just bring this down with a little packer in the center there. We should be good. Neighbours driving past. Now the last steps come out, put the flashing along that top piece, fold down the building wrap, we're done. So now you can see we have a constant overlap. When the moisture pushes in past the window here, it's going to hit this weather fin and run down off onto this bottom flashing here, down over the building wrap and away from the house. Or if it pushes past, it's gonna hit this, other, this second wrap here, which will run down the wrap, over the top of that base one, down building wrap and out. Same up top here, if we get moisture running down on the outside of the wrap here, it's gonna hit this head flashing, which comes down over the top of our, our weather strip here and our side flashings that can run down over the top of our bottom one down. Constant overlap all the way down to the bottom of the house. So that's how I've installed these windows. And it's so good to see this thing finally starting to take shape. For weeks on end, this thing just stood as a box outside while I worked on these windows. And now that I'm installing them, it's actually starting to look like a tiny house, which is getting me pretty excited. As I mentioned, I have to do this in two videos. So the next video, we're gonna come in here and I'll walk you through the house, show you the windows, talk you through some of the thinking. And I'll try and get to that video as soon as possible. You guys know the drill, don't hate, educate, comment down below if you see something's video that can be improved. Or if you have any questions about how I've installed these things, done the flashings on the outside to weatherproof them, or installing on the inside using the packers and lining them up, truing up against the wall, ask down below and I'll respond to you if I can. In the meantime, go build cool stuff. I have heaps of work to do here. I gotta make you guys another video, so I'll see you again soon.